एक्शन Bienvenuti and welcome to another episode of Movie Reviews. My name is Daniela and I'm Alfonso. Today we're going to review Eight and a Half, directed by Federico Fellini, who is regarded as one of the most influential directors of all time. Eight and a Half tells the story of a confused movie director who retreats into his memories and fantasies while he struggles to produce his latest film. That's a very interesting plot. Yeah, very interesting. So why don't we start by talking about the cast? Sure. I think everybody in the film did an incredible job, um, but especially and obviously Marcelo Mastronani as Guido, the director. I just love his performance. I think he really portrays the insecurity of the director. He's trying to run away from everybody and, and he looks very introspective. He did a wonderful job. What did you think? Yeah, for me, it was a lot of new faces, of course. And same, I thought the acting of Marcelo was really good. I think he has a very, very good facial expressions. So that made him transmit the emotions of his character a lot. Um, very good. Hmm. And from what I read, a lot of the actors are legendary actors, mm -hmm. but... I didn't know any of them. This was also a lot of new faces for me. Yeah, and they were all excellent. I thought the acting was really good and the cast was amazing. Yeah, and let's jump into the cinematography, Oof. which was amazing, right? It was amazing. It was really good. I have a lot of favorite scenes, a lot of things to say about it. Yeah. Well, you should start. What do you have to say? Yeah, well, first of all, I thought Jenny DiBenanzo, who is the director of photography, did an amazing job. Since the beginning, that was the thing that couldn't, like, capture me into the movie, was the amazing scenes, the compositions. Uh, the light used for this movie was amazing. It reminded me a lot of the work of this photographer called um, Cartier-Bresson. Hmm a lot of his compositions and I really love the usage of light he has, you know, some scenes are very soft, the um, contrast is really soft and then some other scenes there's like um, the darks are very sub-exposed, right? And overall I love the job, especially like I said, like I mentioned the compositions. Yeah. And what did you think? <laughs> <laughs> His job was amazing. As you mentioned, some, he really leans into the, the shadows. He plays a lot with shadows. And yeah, his blacks are really, really black, <laughs> which I find very cool. And this was filmed in what, in 90, 1963, something yes. like that? And so movies in color were already a thing, but I really like the stylistic choice mm -hmm. of, of doing this film in black and white. Mm -hmm. And yeah, but I also enjoyed the camera movements. Mm -hmm. They are very free flowing. It's as if the camera was a, a character of its own. Mm -hmm. And a lot of movements were not motivated. I thought that in classic cinema, the films were always motivated, but this was crazy for me. It was a very avant-garde film and I loved it. I yeah, know. I thought it, the, the camera movements were really smooth. It was very, like, you were going with the flow with this movie, kind of, right? Yeah, it was very dreamlike, starting from the first scene where Guido is stuck in the, in the mm -hmm. traffic. Mm -hmm. Suddenly the camera is floating and flying and, and moving like crazy. I loved it. Yeah, I agree. The cinematography was amazing, especially I loved all the different types of light that they were used for this film. One that comes to my mind is the silhouette scene with the magician. I thought that was really good. Yeah, I really like that, how it's backlit and it looks wonderful. And a scene that really caught my attention because of the lighting was when Guido's sister was saying that spell, Ana Missy Massa, <laughs> and he looks straight to the painting. And he also looks like a silhouette, as if he was watching a movie in the movie theater. Mm -hmm. And I really like that. Yeah, I thought that 
scene was really interesting too. And this film is full with memories and illusions. And what did you think about the transitions between reality and memory? I thought it was amazing and the transitions were seamless. And it's really hard to tell when Guido is in reality and when he's having his illusions or fantasies. And, and I really like how sometimes people mention certain things that bring him back to his childhood memories. Mm -hmm. And it really works. I really love all the editing. What did you think? Yeah, I thought the transitions were really good. Uh, really smooth. I love those fade-ins into other scenes. But there is this one thing that I struggle with in terms of like editing. Is when Guido is in a dream and he sees his father and his mother. Remember that scene? Mm -hmm. Okay, and there is a scene where his mother is grabbing his head and she's saying, Hello, Guido, how are you? And then they like cut and it's Luisa, yeah. his wife. And I thought like there was like a strange cut that they were trying to make it like smooth, like if it was kind of the same person, but just like changing the face. And I rewatched that scene a couple of times and that was the only particular scene that I, it disturbed me, but you know, there's this other scene where the mother is like cleaning um, the mirror or some glass and then they change to this dream of Guido and I thought that was really well, well achieved. Yeah. And yeah, that, that cut, that match cut between Guido's mother and Luisa, that's definitely very abrupt. Yeah, but I really liked it. I thought it had something to say about maybe an Oedipus complex or something. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And well, speaking of editing, I really, really enjoyed the sound editing. Um, I really like the use of silence in his dream mm -hmm. sequences. I really like the, the sound of the wind, the sound of the birds when the, when the cardinal was talking about birds and stuff like that. The sound design and sound mm -hmm. editing I thought was great. Did mm -hmm. you pay any attention to it? Yeah, I paid attention to it, especially I really like this first scene when there, there's like a lot of nuns and they're in this big open space and they're doing like a 360 shot and there's music and then they just like cut it suddenly. <laughs> And I really liked that. And all the editing choices were really good. I thought it brought a lot to the movie. And also there were kind of like comedy m music at some, at some scenes. And it just made me happy and it made me laugh. And it made me think like, oh, you know, this is a nice scene or, or it, it brought a lot to the movie. It accompanied a good, some scenes like, um, for example, this last last scene where Guido is um, in a comfort in a press conference, you know, and the music is just like overwhelming, and you can kind of feel how he's feeling, and I I really like that. Yeah, that's really cool. The music by Nino Rota was amazing, but I also find the 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 score really funny at times, like in in twice in the film they use. Wagner's Rival of the Valkyries, which in my mind, I always remember Apocalypse Now. <laughs> and that that song always makes me think of war. Mm -hmm. And the way they use it in, in this <laughs> film, it made, made me laugh a lot. It was really comedic. Yeah. But apart from using Richard Wagner's music, mm -hmm. I thought the compositions by, by Nino Rota were amazing. Yeah, I thought the music by Nino Rota was really good. And what did you thought about the production design? I thought it was very beautiful. I noticed that a lot of the compositions had vertical lines. It looked very, very cool. And I also wrote, read that the production designer, which I don't remember the name. Do you know his name? <laughs> yeah, it's Piero Gerardi. Right, Piero Gerardi. Um, I read that all the film was shot on a studio and all the sets mm -hmm. were built. 
and it looked very cool. Mm -hmm. What did you think? Yeah, I didn't know a lot of sets were made. And that's really interesting because one of my favorite sets was the outdoor stage where the magician is doing his act and at the beginning there's a lot of nuns and there's like a bar and there's these like two concrete walls and that was one of my favorite sets and it also had one like a lot of my favorite scenes in terms of composition yeah and i thought that was really good and i thought that it was, was really good it was really good what what are your what are your favorite sets my favorite sets i have two in mind i have one when guido is fighting with that old actor in the hallway of the hotel and the old actor tells him be careful because you're getting old as well you're not the man that you used to be mm -hmm. And I really love the set design of the hallway because it's very narrow and it's very short and claustrophobic, but they put a mirror in the end, mm -hmm. so it looks very long, mm -hmm. but I just loved it. It was claustrophobic nonetheless. Mm -hmm. I also like when Guido enters the elevator with the clergy, with the priest and the cardinal, and the elevator looks just like a confessionary. It looks just like a church and he's surrounded by all of these figures that should be, um, I don't know, it should be a, a nice scene, but it feels like a horror scene, kind of. Mm -hmm. And I really like the set design. Yeah. Also, one, another one of my favorites is where they have like this huge bathtub because there's like a hole at the top that looks just right into the bathtub. And I thought that was really smart and really good. And just that whole set, I really liked it, right? Because there's like the door that comes like from the street in and then there's these stairs that go like to the older floors above. And there's just, there were like two, there's like a lot of places to work in that same set. Right. And those were your favorites in terms of production design, but what were your favorite scenes in general? Oh, Alfonso, <laughs> my favorite scenes, I, I had a lot of favorite scenes. One was the first one when Guido is suffocating in the car and there's like all these cars, but nobody's really moving. And there's this specific one in mind that there's the take of the boss and there's like a lot of hands just hanging out, no heads, just the, ha the hands. And uh, that was visually r very fantastic. And creepy. <laughs> yeah, creepy, but really good too. And there's also this other scene when they're in that same like open stage where the magician and all of that takes place. And there's this one scene where the producer is talking with Guido, but you can only see the hand of the producer and just the, the back. And in between that, you can see the face of Guido. And I thought that was right. That was amazing. Yeah, that was amazing. <laughs> yeah, and I can talk, I can go on and on about my favorite scenes, but I have too many. Honestly. Yeah, I think it's the same with me. Every every single thing that I'm remembering, <laughs> yeah. I could I could count as one of my favorite scenes. Mm -hmm. And yeah, definitely the opening scene, the, mm -hmm. the dream sequence when he's suffocating, that's also one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. I also like when him and all of the crowd are going down to the sauna. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's also like another nightmare, which mm -hmm. is very, very cool, full of smoke. Mm -hmm. And I also like his memories of childhood. Mm -hmm. I already mentioned the Anamisi Masa. Mm -hmm. So I like when the, when the mind reader is reading his mind, mm -hmm and how it cuts into the childhood memory and mm -hmm. I yeah as you mentioned every single scene has the potential to be one of my favorite scenes yeah and I think I have to mention the scene where Gloria and Mario uh, the friends of Guido are dancing right that it's an inspiration for John Travolta and Uma Thurman scene in Pulp Fiction right, right. yeah <laughs> they are replicating the the scene, which I didn't know until you let me know. Yeah. That was very cool. Yeah, I think this movie is just visually really 
amazing and spectacular and I just have to say a lot of good things about it but I could talk on and on and on about all the scenes right in in general I loved all the movie yeah I agree this movie was amazing from start to finish so let's talk about the plot and the themes what did you think okay well to start with I think it had a lot about it had a lot to say about um creativity frustration right i think we see in a lot of scenes that guido is just overwhelmed by people and they're all coming to him and asking him about like oh can i be in your movie and what is your movie <laughs> going to be about and i just think at some point when you love something and it becomes work it can get to a point where it's not enjoyable anymore and you block yourself right so i think it had a, a, a thing to say about something about to say about that you know like about just being creatively frustrated and creatively just block and yeah you have this amazing project but it's not going to be you cannot like um move forward on your project if you're like not in the right mind to do it So that's one of the themes I thought about and I could see it perfectly in the movie and on Guido's face and with all the people just coming and saying, "Oh, I want a part on your, of your movie <laughs> and if you dance I'll give you a part on my movie," right? Like <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What do you think? Yeah, I agree with you. Definitely the director's block and the creative block is the main theme of the film. And Guido feels like a fraud. He feels like he's a talentless hack and he feels like his career is over, but he's obviously very talented. And I like how it shows not only the internal blocks, but also the external pressure. He has this critic who is criticizing him all the time and who is telling him, oh, your, your script is trash. You say nothing of importance, nothing happens in your film. And he has the priests and the clergy telling him, Oh, you 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 keep mixing the profane with the sacred, and that's not good. And you have a responsibility to educate. And he also has um, the producer telling him that he wants to make money. So he mm -hmm. has all of this external pressure, mm -hmm. and it's a film that really portrays the hurdles of artists and the the pressures from society and the pressures that one can put on himself. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was really cool and very relatable. And I, I basically thought that it was a self-portrait mm -hmm. of Federico Fellini. <laughs> and I thought that was amazing. I thought it was very, very honest. Mm -hmm. His portrayal of how he treats his wife, mm -hmm. how he shows that he has mistresses and several mm -hmm. muses, and his portrayal of his Catholic upbringing. Mm -hmm. So... I thought it was amazing. Yeah. Yeah, I thought something that was interesting was when we see Guido as a kid and he's, you know, in this kind of um, monastery for boys and they said that um, they're like seeing women as a sin, you know, like you shouldn't like look at them or I don't know. And then in his like future life in this fantasy, um, he's surrounded by women. And like you said, like he has like mistresses and muses and all of this. So I think it has to something to say about um, religion, you know, and how like sometimes like religion can be contradicted, contradicted. And especially when you grow up and you find other things in life you see that not everything has to be by the book right or how like this other people of men of power say life is but you right. know like i think it has something to say about that about religion yeah i mean it's an italian film and italians just like mexicans most of us are raised catholics and a lot of catholics carry a lot of guilt and shame until their adulthood And I think Guido was trying to free himself to get liberated from that guilt and shame. And I think that shows in the film with, with how he treats women, 
with how he has muses and, and mistresses and he's a philanderer and yeah it, uh, and it was about liberating himself not only from the shackles of religion but also liberating liberating himself in general from the pressure of the press and from mm -hmm. the pressure of his producer and critics mm -hmm. and I think that's the meaning of himself shooting at himself and committing suicide mm -hmm. in the last scene mm -hmm. yeah that last scene was really open for interpretation right a lot of things happen but from that scene um well before that before he shoots himself i think you see this like the last drop right like he doesn't want to be there he's like trying to escape he's trying to go everyone is like on him like say something do this do that you know like controlling him until it's like i'm done you know like i just i want to do what i feel like i want to do right exactly. so i think that's even for the audience is like oh you know like uh aside like oh. <laughs> you know like there's not gonna be any film yeah i accept whatever is gonna happen next and uh, yeah it was very funny or interesting that he he was such a personal filmmaker like he wanted to portray his childhood experiences and and a mini plot film but <laughs> We find out that he's actually producing a science fiction <laughs> film with the biggest set, with the biggest <laughs> set built in, in forever. Yeah. A huge spaceship. And yeah. I was like, oh, that's, that's contradictory. He doesn't yeah. seem that type of filmmaker. Yeah. What other themes did you notice in the film? Because honestly, those were the only two that I could think yeah. of. I don't know. I think... I'm gonna watch this film several times, a lot of times, and I'm pretty sure I will find new themes every single time. It's an amazing film. And I also like, I guess, Fellini places a lot of importance in memories and dreams. And I don't know if it's a theme, but it's for sure an important part of the film. Mm -hmm. I believe we're both gonna have a really good rating about this film. Yeah, I have the same feeling. <sighs> it's time for the truth, the moment of truth. Right? That's right. Alfonso, how would you rate this movie? Amazing film. Very relatable. Very inspiring. It made me feel very happy and inspired. I don't know. I could say many things. I'm just going <laughs> to say that I'm going to rate this film with a 10. <laughs> Our first 10 in the channel. <laughs> What's your rating, Danny? Okay, well, I love this film, especially the photography, like the director of photography. It inspired me a lot. Like, I want to be as good as him. And like you said, I can say a lot of things about this movie. But I don't just give easily tens. So that's what I'm going to give this movie a nine. <laughs> That's a good rating. Yeah. So, we highly recommend this film and we encourage you to watch it. Eight and a Half by Federico Fellini. You can watch it in the Criteria channel. And now it's time for us, for me and for everyone to know the movie for next week. Next week, we're going to review Candyman, directed by Nia Da Costa. Oh, it's scary. <laughs> yeah, a scary movie in the movie theater. That's always a great experience. Exactly. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, please like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you next Friday for another movie reviews. Arrivederci. Arrivederci.